Hey everyone, welcome, welcome. I am Christine George. I am the co-founder of uh, Post and Beam Creative and I am your host today on the No Like Trust podcast. Thank you for being here today. We have a really special guest for you. Sabina uh, Steinbrecher is here. She is with Hivology. Hivology is an online accelerated learning platform for real estate agents and Sabina is the chief Hivologist. Uh, so we're going to learn so much more about it. Welcome to the show, Sabina. Thanks for being here. Thanks, Christine. I'm excited. I can't wait to talk about all this good stuff. Me too. So we're going to get right into it. So Hiveology is a relatively new online learning platform. Um, you, however, have been in the space for a really long time. So can you kind of take us back and give us sort of the executive summary of you know your background and your professional experience and how you got here? Yeah, I'd be happy to. Um, we are l probably the the original gangsters of of e learning back in the day. In 1998, I developed my first e learning platform, which is crazy when you think about what tech was like back then. Um, and one of our very first customers actually was the National Association of Realtors. So we had managed all of the NAR platforms and education delivery for 25 years, and we're still doing projects with NAR and with some of the, the different groups within NAR, like WCR and REBI. Um, but a couple of years ago, what I wanted to do was take all that experience of us working with NAR and a bunch of the, like a lot of the boards and associations and brokers um, and translate that into a new platform that was really focused on this idea of accelerating an agent's success. And all of the, the ways in which we do that was sort of this mix of, or what we call sort of an ecosystem of four or five different things. So the idea was we wanted to bring together the idea of using data or analytics in a really cool way to help them uh, the learning design itself and the learning experts that we're working with. We have a rewards or gamification component. There's a great community piece. And then we have a social mission as well. So all of that is sort of where this idea of a hive came from and the name Hiveology. So that's sort of a long way of saying that's how we became Hiveology. And we see our job as being like the guides or the Hiveologists. You know, we're studying what works and what doesn't work and trying to use all that experience Awesome. So let's talk about online learning for a minute. Sure. Um, so one of my biggest challenges as an online learner, and I'm sure you've heard this before, is multitasking, right? Mm -hmm. So you're online, you're listening to, you know, a, a lecture or a workshop or whatnot. And, you know, in the background, you're answering your email or you're doing ticking things off of your to-do list. What are some of the best ways, Hiveology or in general, what are some of the best ways to keep people engaged in an online learning experience? Yeah, that's been a problem since day one. So we have been working on that issue for that literally that long. And there's there's always a certain number of things you can do as an individual in terms of how you set yourself up for learning and the way that you perhaps set up your time and your environment. Um, those are, I think, things that all of us can do where, you know, it's still hard to do, myself included. I'm constantly taking classes and I have the same issues. So what we recommend is, you know, to kind of follow the model that we've included in the way that we've designed all of our stuff. We're big proponents of micro training, which basically means that everything we do is even if it's a course that eventually will take somebody four or six hours or more to, to complete the pieces of that course are designed in 15 minute increments and all of it sort of works somebody through something, you know, a piece at a time, piece at a time. So you learn a t micro topic, which is, could be a little tactic, a little skill, something, but it's less than 15 minutes ish. And then you move into the next one, the next one. So you can do 15 minutes a day if you choose to, um, that makes a big, big difference. The other thing that we found is, and this is really true because there's so many demands on, on our time. We found that it was really critical to sort of create carrots. <laughs> you know, I'll say that instead of, you know, full on bribing people to sort of stick to the end of something. <laughs> that's kind of what we do. And, you know, you see that now when we work our way through something, we'll do, you know, there's a state of the end bonus or the at the end of the next thing, you're going to get something to help, you know, motivate somebody. And it's an accountability model, too, frankly. So I have personally been studying this idea of accountability and how to keep yourself in sort of in focus. And so far, those are the sorts of things that we're doing. 
We also apply some gamification and some rewards models that are designed to really help and reward people for sticking with something and moving to the next step and the next step and the next step. So that's kind of the way we've been doing it anyway. So like three things, setting yeah. the sorry, setting the environment, mm-hmm. um, giving people small doses of skills, 15 minute doses, and then, you know, sort of dangling the carrot or providing a reward system. Exactly. Okay. Awesome. All right. So here's one of my other challenges. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll go to a conference or I'll do some online learning and, you know, I'll get really jazzed up. I'll take copious notes. I'll get super excited. And then the second I walk away or get on the plane to come home, like it, it all goes to hell. Like I don't, you know, it's really hard to implement. Um, so how, like, what is your advice? How do you get people to actually implement the learning that they're experiencing? That's, um, we do that in a couple of different ways. One is by someone choosing the style of learning that suits them best. So for instance, we offer stuff that's live virtual and stuff that's on demand. Some people like to take their time and go through things that are on demand. Some people like to, um, do it live. Um, and then the post work or being able to review work is really important too. So what we're doing is we're providing things like a community where people can work together. So you can come back into the community and help each other with maybe with immediate questions or actual tactical questions or implementing something that you've learned. Another thing we're doing is we have boot camps that run once a month. For me, this is one of my favorite ways of learning. So we are seeing lots of other people who like this too. And in essence, what you're doing is every month you are sort of dealing with a certain amount of training and then you're taken through assignments and homework and coming back into the environment or into the next class and having time for Q&A or office hours with your expert, those sorts of things that really support this idea of not just learning, but also implementing the learning. And I personally think that one of the things that we do best is this idea of really practical and tactical education. So much of what's out there is theoretical. And I think we all walk away doing exactly what you just described, where we're like, this is so cool. Love it. May or may not have the information to be able to implement it or have direction on how to implement it, let alone this idea of accountability. Like, how do I make sure I do that? So we're trying to implement as many of those things as we can to help somebody be successful. Because frankly, you know, in the end, there's little tweaks that we can do to help them. Obviously, they still have, you still have to be able to, you still have to execute on some of this yourself. Clearly, it can't just be forced. But like we're doing stuff also like we're working with industry solution providers with most of our courses to even be able to recommend some ways to help implement. So for instance, We can build a a marketing course and say, go talk to Christine's team. They do a great job of helping you execute on your marketing plan. Or maybe there's a software that we can suggest to somebody or give them three months free, which is happening with a lot of our courses where we're getting deals for our students. So even that piece is important to make sure that you execute on something that you're learning. Yeah, that's really, that's great. I love the idea of community. Yeah, me too. Um, yeah, because I, I really have experienced um, whenever you've got a, a community to fall back on, whether it's to ask questions or to, um, you know, gather information or see examples of what other people are doing to be able to share. I find that really motiv- motivating, especially when people are willing to collaborate and tell you from their perspective what works and maybe what doesn't work. Yeah. Um, talk a little bit more about your community. The community model that we've designed includes sort of two or three different things. It depends on the course. So for instance, we've just launched this really great course about Web3 and how it will impact your business as a real estate agent. And for that program, what we've done is we've got the Web3 experts as well as guest speakers doing a monthly get together that's a live virtual and that get together is going to be we're going to, we're going to talk about what's new to some degree because that's obviously a very quickly shifting and changing area. So there'll be a little bit of that, but it's also designed for people to be able to get together, ask questions and and do follow-ups. Um that's a good way, a good idea. I think for all of our courses we'll have some version of that. But the other one, the other way we do it is just a peer to peer peer to peer community. 
where people can talk to one another who have taken the material. You know, you're in our, let's say you're in our Web3 community and those people can talk to one another. So this is where the learners themselves, the agents themselves or brokers can talk to one another. Those are the two pieces that we're currently offering. Um, and then we're looking at a couple of things that we haven't launched yet, but I'll hopefully be able to announce that pretty soon too. So I, I, on that note, I know you have some exciting things that you're launching. I think it's called Agent Accelerator. Is that it? That's exactly it. So the Agent Accelerator, we've just opened up the wait list for it. What's we're, what we've done is we've designed a new tool that I have been trying to figure out, I think, since I started this company. because, But it was always really difficult to do because the technology just wasn't there. But in the last number of years with machine learning and now with AI, we are able to use peer source data, in other words, crowdsourced information. So you tell us a little bit about yourself. I'll tell my tell something about myself, et cetera, et cetera. So we start building up this pool of data. Along with that, we have market data. We've got industry data. We've got demographics and geographic data, all kinds of neat stuff, including a bunch of our own proprietary algorithms and whatnot. And in the end, what we're able to do is to drive back really critical insights to a an individual agent to help them build their business in a way that'll be much more focused, more curated, much more customized and personalized. So in the areas of things like business organization or business performance, where we'll be able to say things like, so based on what you've told us, you fall in the 60 percentile. If you want to know what the agents at the next level up are doing, you need to sort of jump into the accelerator and, and you'll be given that information once we know enough about them. And that's how that's going to work. And what's cool about that is it'll give them a learning path, certainly. Like we'll be able to say, you know, for instance, the people in the next level are doing things like um, they all have a team, you know, they have an assistant or they're using technology in a certain way or they're using certain lead gen tools right now or maybe they're doing you know, who knows what, it, all of this cool stuff will be able to drive back to them to give them not what we think they should do, but what is actually happening in the industry and what's working for people. That's the entire concept. So all of this, this idea of peer sourced information, I think is a really interesting way of delivering real value in a really sort of tr tested way. You know, right. we're not just providing a static learning path that goes out to everybody. And it's not the same for everybody. It makes no sense for the way most learning paths are done in the, in not just this industry, in all industries, they're almost always incredibly static. It's like, well, if you want to be successful, take these four things. It's not the same for everybody. So that is a new tool. We're right now in the, what we call the learning phase of the tool, because this is a tool that literally has a brain. So it will learn and continue to grow and add value. So every time somebody comes in, they'll actually see more information. We'll be able to reveal more information. And then as soon as we know enough, we'll actually be able to give them reports that will say, here's what we're, we've learned and here's what you can apply to your own business. It'd be very that, cool stuff. That is exciting. It's that... Yeah. Um, it just, it sort of like makes me think about, you know, one agent who is, you know, you might have one agent or one team that's really relationship focused and just does a stellar job of nurturing their SOI and, you know, hundred percent of their business is coming from that, which is most successful agents, right? Then you have other teams that really invest and are successful with online lead generation. Um, and so I can completely see like down the road, sort of the, the AI, you know, your system being able to notice that, hey, maybe I'm more of a relationship-based agent. And so this is the path to get to the next level for me yeah. versus this person over here is, is going to be going in a completely different way. So I yeah. love that idea of getting really personal and customizable um, so that, you know, people have that sort of tangible, this is my path. And then they can also always, you know, tweak it based on, you know, what, what feels right for them. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, at the beginning, the information will be less, ex le not less exciting, but less customized because as the tool learns, the first stuff we're going to learn is like what everybody is saying about X. So it's like one of the questions that we ask everybody is what's working for you right now in this market? 
you know, that's an interesting answer for a lot of people in and of itself, you know, mm-hmm. or like how many deals are people just like you doing? Do you feel like you're, you're doing well or not? It's nice to be able to compare yourself a little bit to what the norm is or what other people are doing, or yeah. frankly, create some aspirational goals. It's like, well, we know the next level they're doing five times, two times, five more deals, whatever it is, that kind of information is what will be derived first. Then as we get to your point, as we get more and more information, as the AI piece kicks in, as the machine learning piece kicks in, as we can apply algorithms, really starts to get deep and exciting, including, by the way, by topic, because every time we launch a program, we're going to be driving data from that too. So for instance, we have a really great social media lead gen course that is fairly new for us, but um, is live. And we can say things like, you know, let's focus on everything people are doing around lead gen and social media and ask and ask the, the right questions there. Now we can have a lot more information to drive back. Or maybe it's about, you know, we have a really cool AI boot camp coming up. So maybe it's all AI related and what's working for people and not worth someone's time otherwise, like that kind of stuff. So it's just going to get better and better. Super excited. So cool. So yeah. cool. I love it. I love it. And I love that you're leading it. So I know that Hiveology has a a social mission Mm -hmm. as well, which I think is, you know, we don't see enough of. I think it's social missions are becoming more important um, and more central to organizations, but there's still a huge opportunity for them. Tell, Tell us about your social mission. I would love to. Yeah, I have to say I was a little bit surprised. You know, I was fortunate to be one of the recipients of the RAS Media Newsmaker of the Year Award. I um, saw that. Congratulations. So that was That's very new. nice. Thank you so much. Um, what was really cool is they ran a subsequent piece about the organizations that had made the list that also had some kind of a social mission. And I think there's like there's a couple hundred people every year that make this list. There were five or six organizations that had a social mission that they highlighted. And I think that was it, which tells you there's a lot more space for, for all of us to be doing this kind of thing. And for us, what we decided to do, and it sounds like it was just because of our name, but the truth is we were doing this before we developed Hiveology, but our social mission is we are an organization that's all about saving our bees and our pollinators, particularly our honeybees, because they do so much work in our food system. And obviously everybody I think is aware there's a, there's a pretty critical need for more support. So the first step in our social mission was to build a, what we're calling a bee sanctuary instead of just an apiary, because we're very much about bees and less about honey. Most, most beekeepers are the opposite, right? It's honey first and then the bees. We really wanted to look at how we can support honeybees in our area to start with. And so we invested in building a a fairly large apiary. We have give or take about 2 million bees. Nobody's counting, but you know what I mean? Like based on the number of hives we have and approximate. So, and we started out by, with probably a couple hundred thousand. So in the last year and a half, it's grown to about 2 million, which is great. So we've been learning a lot along the way. This is not a simple endeavor we've discovered. These are lovely live creatures. So we need to make sure that we know how to take care of them properly. So for instance, this year, our mission was how do we make sure that throughout the whole year, they have enough natural, you know, organic um, sources of nectar and pollen. So we were really focused on what do we need to plant for them to support them the best and did a ton of research around that. And our goal really at this point is to maximize the first apiary and understand how to really manage one, build one properly. What do you need to plant? How do you manage it? And our goal is to continue to grow either new locations, other apiaries in other parts of the country, or to provide more research and more education around what's happening with bees and so other people can do it themselves. That's basically where we're going with this. And what we decided to do is 3% of every dollar that comes in the door. So every time somebody buys a course with us, they're automatically supporting bees as well. 3% of every dollar goes right back into into the hives and into the honeybees. And we also just recently launched, um, it's funny because Obviously, a lovely side, um, sort of an output of the hives is is honey. So we have we are taking some out because you have to, um, but the rest we're leaving for the bees to eat. But the honey that we do have, we decided what we would do is make um, honey themed closing gifts. Since we're in the real estate space, it made sense for us to work with a partner to do that. 
and a hundred percent of the profits go right back into oh how cool lives. yeah so that's our how project how cool how cool so what's what are some of the things you're making with the honey we starting with two closing gift boxes and one of them is a it, they're really both tasting boxes so one of them is is simpler than the other so just really more of a size difference and since we're in the finger lakes in new york which is a one of the few areas that is really really like we are especially is super clean there's no there's very little pollution we don't have farms close enough to where the apiary is that we have to worry about pesticides and things so our honey is really 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 good quality and really good for you. Plus it tastes fantastic. It's really unique. This whole thing about how cool, you know, what honey from one region or even one part of the year to the next can taste completely different yeah. is really super cool. It's just like the way wine works. You know, if you yeah. start getting into it, it really gets exciting. And I knew nothing about this before we started. So for me, it's been a really fun learning experience, to be honest. So right now on our site, we've got two closing gift boxes tasting kit of the Finger Lakes, which is our honey, as well as a couple of others. And then there's a larger one as well. So we think it would be nice for a realtor to feel good about giving a gift like that to yeah. a client and the client, yeah. I think would appreciate it too. We think it anyway, oh. will see it's brand new. So we're not sure yet, but that's what we're doing. Oh, that's awesome. I love it. That is just really wonderful. All right. So as we start to wrap up here, sure. um, what are three things you'd like to leave our community with today? It's a really good question. I think one of the things that we're trying to be all about that I would love to focus on and hopefully everybody else will benefit from is this idea that given how challenging the market is for most people right now, you know, the one thing that I think can help anybody get through this and maintain or grow their, their practice is to focus on an area of business that can create a more diversified income stream for them. Mm -hmm. So take, do something, whether it's with us or somebody else, but create or find something that will create a new income stream for you. And obviously something that's working in this marketplace. So if in your area, for instance, you know, you want to become a distressed property specialist and understand how to help people. We have this wonderful course on how to become a compassionate distressed property specialist. Really well done, you know, or is it short term rentals or is it you know, the social media piece, or is it something in web three that you think, you know, you know, a bunch of people that want to learn how to buy and buy with crypto or whatever it is. There's so many different things that people can do. We even have this great program that's called, um, hundred thousand, four weeks to a hundred thousand dollar pipeline. And it's basically shows people how to find a new hundred thousand dollars in their pipeline in, in a very short period of time. Things like that, that's what I, we would recommend. I think that's the most important thing. Um, and then other than that, I think the other thing that is is critical is this idea of maintaining sanity and balance in this marketplace that I think is really, really difficult. I think I mentioned to you, Christine, last time we talked, we're actually considering putting together a health and wellness piece of our Hiveology program. Yes. I think it's actually kind of a neat idea. You know, it's one of the things that we're going to, throw out there in a poll to all of our, our audience, but I would love to be able to help agents maintain some balance and maintain some health and fitness so that they can make it through difficult times like this. But frankly, when things are good, they're just, if not more stressed out because they're so busy. I mean, we saw people really get burnt out in this last crazy market. Um, and then the third thing is we hope that whether it's through us or somebody else that they will consider choosing companies that are giving back you know, or they, them, they themselves consider some sort of social mission for their own business. Oh, those are really great takeaways. Um, that's, I'm just writing this one, last one down. That's good. Um, okay. Sabina, finish this sentence. <laughs> no like trust is. No like trust is. I guess it's the essence of all relationships. Oh, great. Yep. Beautiful. Oh my goodness. All right. Last thing. Where can people find you? How do they learn more about Hiveology? Um, people can just come to the website at Hiveology.com. 
uh, or certainly drop into any of our social media, Instagram or Facebook or LinkedIn is great. We're not doing a whole lot yet on YouTube, but that this channel is live and will be soon. So if they just look for us, it's Hiveology, which is spelled kind of funny. It's Hive, H-I-V-E-O-L-O-G-I-E.com. And they can find us everywhere. And before long, the Agent Accelerator, they can sign up for the wait list now if they want to. Um, that's on the site as well. But we'll be getting that launched probably in the next couple of weeks, it looks like. So people can actually start playing oh, with I it. I can't wait. Yeah, that'll be fun. I'll let wait. you know too, specifically, Christine, when it's live. Yes, I can't wait. I'll, t- I'll definitely be... Uh excited to see it and take a look at it. Um, well, thank you so much for being here with us today. We so appreciate it. My pleasure. Um, for those of you who are joining us live or listening to the podcast or watching the replay, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, subscribe and um, give us a five-star review. And if you like what we're doing here, definitely share it with your friends. And until next time, have a great day, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye.